My name is Falami Prehe. I'm a single mum living and working in Bristol. My life was pretty ordinary until last year when something devastating happened to me. My ex-partner posted intimate photos of me online for the whole world to see. I was a victim of what's now known as revenge porn. After splitting from my partner, he decided to upload very private pictures of me to the web. And just like hundreds of other women, my images were then reposted on dozens of sites and could be viewed anywhere in the world. Since my former partner's conviction, I've set up a website to hear from others who have been victims of similar online offences. I've been overwhelmed by the number of people who've contacted me after being through the same sort of trauma. I may have been betrayed in the worst way possible, but at least I knew who had done this to me and he was brought to justice. Tonight, I'll be looking into one of the latest and most sophisticated forms of internet crime in which organised gangs entrap men and women using webcams, capturing intimate moments with one aim in mind, blackmail. This crime is known as sextortion. You may have heard in the headlines of it being sordid, rude or a little bit risque, but for many victims, a simple web chat could be life-changing or even fatal. Wayne May runs a website called Scam Survivors. His site monitors and reports on the new ways scammers use the web to exploit people. OK, so in a typical Skype conversation, I would see you, you would see me. But obviously, I can see you right now, but what you are seeing is this blonde lady and not me. So what I'm doing is using some software which will allow me to manipulate this particular female using pre-recorded footage. So none of it is live, it's all pre-recorded, made up in such a way that you can click certain buttons and get her to do certain actions. The scammer can appear to be anybody. They'll use this to then persuade this person to get naked, get into a compromising position and record that. James, not his real name, was online one night when he received a request from someone he didn't know. It was a Sunday night. I went on Facebook, started to talk to a few of my friends. From there, I got a friend request and she started talking to me straight away. She was asking me questions. She was telling me she's from France. And then she was telling me she wanted to get naked in front of a camera. I thought, yeah, why not? We started talking on the camera for a bit, for probably roughly, roughly about a minute and a half. Then she was trying to get into asking me, do I like having sex? Do you want to do it on camera to camera? James naively did exactly what his new friend wanted and soon found himself being blackmailed. After not even 30 or 40 seconds, she just cut down the camera on me and I turned off my camera. Then she wrote something to me on Facebook saying that she's the devil. She wants to ruin my life. She's going to upload the video on YouTube and send it to my friends, my family, my co-workers at my workplace. James reported the case to the police and was advised not to pay up. Detectives up and down the country, including this team in Bedfordshire, are now dealing with this crime on a weekly basis. Some of the victims have been told uh, that unless they pay a certain amount of money, um, the videos um, will be sent to their Facebook contacts and also uploaded onto YouTube. Um, and they are basically told that unless they pay money, um, that it will be left online for the whole world to see. It's a crime which can also have fatal consequences. In 2013, Daniel Perry from Dunfernline took his own life after having an online conversation with someone he believed to be a girl the same age as him. The chat had been recorded by a gang who threatened to show the explicit exchanges to his family and friends unless he paid them off. Within an hour of being blackmailed, he went to the Fourth Road Bridge where he jumped to his death. People come to us absolutely scared for their lives, convinced their life is over. Uh, we've had people say they want to kill themselves and we've had to explain to them, look, it's not worth killing yourself over. It's a scam. You deal with it. This is how you deal with it. But it's not worth taking your life over. It's a scam with a global reach 
and the blackmailers can be anywhere in the world. Interpol, working with the Philippines police, raided the sophisticated extortion call centres last year. We spoke to Paul Ward, who leads Interpol's cyber centre in Singapore. Interpol regard this crime as extremely serious. The threat is truly global in nature and affects every single continent of the world and affects every single person in the world that has an internet connection. Criminal groups are making many, many thousands of pounds, dollars, euros in profit and lots of people's lives and safety are being put at risk. Back in the UK, an investigator who was undercover with the National Crime Agency says he is shocked by how organised extortionists are. In one particular operation, we became aware of the degree of sophistication displayed by an organised crime group. They had recruited IT specialists to engage with victims around the world. In another department, they recruited young men and women, highly educated, and they were used as part of the entrapment process. Then we looked at the, the money side of things as well, uh, the money coming into this particular country, where they set up their own bureau de change in order that the monies could be obtained very, very quickly and they could vanish rapidly as well. When people come to us and say, should I speak to the police? We tell them, absolutely, speak to the police, let them make a report on it. Because the more information the police get, the more likely they are to be able to do something about it. Unless we know about what is going on and where it's happening, we're not going to be able to bring offenders to justice. In Bedfordshire, in one month alone in March this year, I've had five crimes reported. That says to me if five men are willing to overcome the definite embarrassment and in some cases possible social implications of reporting it, what is actually the true number of people that have been targeted and are actually victims of this crime? It's probably a, a lot higher. I didn't know what to do. I was shaking. I was really shocked. I'm shaking right now, and since then, I didn't know what to do. Whatever happens, do not get into a camera-to-camera -camera with a person unless you know them and you've seen them before.